Did you know that I am standing where the last battle is going to take place? This is Megiddo right here. But if you look down here, this is the Valley of Megiddo or the Valley of Jezreel. This is where the Antichrist and the armies of the earth will come against Israel and think that they're going to win and crush Israel. But if you read the Bible, you'll see Jesus will return and with fire from his mouth, he will destroy and evaporate the Antichrist and the armies. Also in Micah, it says that this is the threshing floor, that the Lord will bring these armies and crush them once and for all. Jesus is king and he has won. All right, so he's talking about the Battle of Armageddon described in Revelation, multiple times in Revelation, as well as in Ezekiel. We have to remember that Revelation is a book full of symbols. Revelation 16 says that the devil and the beast and the false prophet will perform a bunch of signs and go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for the battle on the great day of God, the Almighty. And they assemble them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. And of course, right after this happens, flashes of lightning, rumbling, pearls of thunder and a great earthquake every island fled away no mountains were to be found and great hailstones about 100 pounds each fell from heaven on people and they cursed god for the plague of the hail because the plague was so severe of course this is the same imagery that jesus uses in matthew 24 when he describes his second coming stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken talking about the great white throne judgment the earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them even earlier in revelation chapter 6 a great earthquake the sun became black as sackcloth the moon became came like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit the sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place so it's clear that the book of revelation is describing the same event over and over but from different angles so to speak i'm just going to tell you right now that the battle of armageddon is not a physical war where a whole bunch of countries just declare war on israel and just try to fight them right that doesn't happen if we look at revelation 11 this describes two witnesses here rise and measure the temple of god and the altar and those who worship there but do not measure the court outside of the temple leave that out for it is given over to the nations and they will trample the city for 42 months and if you don't know this is definitely not referring to a physical temple anytime a temple is referred to in the new testament it's always referring to the spiritual jerusalem the new holy city which is just the body of christ you are a temple of the holy spirit revelation chapter 21 confirms this i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and john was carried into the spirit and he saw the holy city Jerusalem. You see, the bride of Christ, aka the holy city Jerusalem, is every Christian. First Peter chapter 2 says, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves are like living stones being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. Jesus himself was the cornerstone. And if we look at Revelation, this is so cool. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the lamb because obviously they laid the foundations for the church as christ was the cornerstone and everything built off of that so the significance here in verse 2 where the outer temple is being trampled is symbolizing tribulation that the body of christ faces all throughout the world ever since jesus came for the first time and will continue to face until jesus comes back because on the outside even though christians are dying every single day for their faith christians are the most hated people on the planet but of course at the end of the day all of god's people are actually winning the whole time so the core outside of the temple is obviously symbolizing the physical bodies that christians have but the inner temple is obviously their souls which are going to be saved now when it comes to the battle of armageddon this is clearly not talking about a war against physical israel hebrews chapter 12 says we have come to mount zion and to the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem so when we see in revelation country is going up to fight against jerusalem it's not talking about that place in the middle east it's talking about god's people all over the world because they themselves, the body of Christ, make up heavenly Jerusalem. So the best way I can describe the battle of Armageddon is if we actually go to Matthew 13, where Jesus tells us the parable of the weeds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seeds in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. So obviously the good seed is the sons of the kingdom, the Christians today, and the weeds are the sons of the devil. 
the people who don't believe in Jesus. Then the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them into bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So basically, as we get closer and closer to Jesus' return, the closer the harvest is. Revelation chapter 14 also tells us about the harvest. On a white cloud, seated on the cloud, one like a son of man, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. The harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So basically, as Jesus started planting the seeds 2,000 years ago when he began the kingdom of heaven on earth, that's when the church started to grow. And as we get closer to Jesus' return, the wheat and the weeds, or the children of God and the children of the devil, become more and more visible. The battle between good and evil on a worldwide scale is going to be more and more visible. And we know that in chapter 16, it says that the unholy trinity is going to go abroad to the kings of the entire world to assemble them for the battle on the great day of God the Almighty. So this is describing every country in the world, all of the kingdoms, basically making a worldwide declaration of war against Christians. This is just a time period of worldwide persecution against the church because obviously the world does not like Jesus and Christians are the people who love Jesus. Jesus said, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So Christians have been experiencing tribulation and persecution for the last 2,000 years, but right before Jesus comes back, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth. This is the same thing we saw in Revelation 16. All of the kings coming together for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints, the holy city of the saints, the beloved city, but fire came down from heaven and consumes them. Again, in Revelation 19, the fire that consumes them is the fire that comes from Jesus' mouth at his second coming. He will strike down the nations.